Now, so the so as I kind of mentioned, ladies and gentlemen, you could do um, you know prime factorization. That works, right? Eight times ten was eighty, but it might not be as obvious as you know what gives me eighty-four. So if you're going to do prime factorization, I would divide, right? I'd divide it by two, and I'd get. Uh, um, you know, 42, and then I divide that again, I get 21, and so forth. So, um, and you could keep on doing the prime factorization. The other way that I like to do it is re instead rewriting this. Instead of rewriting it as a product of its prime factors and then taking out the pairs, I like to rewrite it as a product of a square number times some some another number to give you 84. So when I look at that, Taylor, what I do is I look at my square numbers: one, four, nine. 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, and it keeps on going up and up. And does anybody remember why these are square numbers? Why are these square numbers? Because you can take the square root of them, right? Square root of 1 is 1. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 16 is 4. Square root of 25 is 5. Square root of 36 is 6. Square root of uh, 49 is 7. Square root of 64 is 8, right? You can take the square root of the number. You can keep on going higher and higher. So what we do is we kind of look at the highest number and we say, all right, does 64 divide into 84? No. Does 49? No. Does 36? No. Does 25? No. 16? 32? 48? 64? No. Does 9? No. Does 4? Yes. How many times does 4 go into 84? Close. 21. Um, so now, rather than writing it as a product of its primes, I just write it as a square number times another number. Why is that helpful? Because can I take the square root of square numbers? Yes, all right. So square root of 4 is 2 times square root of 21. And that's done. Okay. So as you guys are doing your problems, you can do either 